My friend, thank you for stopping by Blossoming by Grace and Grit. This is Gloria Restoy. Don't just pass by, stay a while, gather with us, subscribe and click on the bell so that you're notified of every new video that I make. Be a part of our community, be a part of our family and your life will never be the same again as we learn the precepts and the foundational truths of the Word of God which have stood the test of time. Let us change the world together by changing ourselves first, allowing Him to change us. Thank you for your visit. Thank you for your subscription. It means a lot to me. Have a blessed day. Faith, not fear. The Bible says in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5, Examine yourselves as to whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not know yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you? How many times do we almost drown in the floodwaters of fear? How often are we overcome by waves of discontent or pulled by currents of doubt? How often do we forget that Jesus Christ, the master of the universe, is within us? He has already saved us from doubt, disappointment, dread, and death. In his strength, we can move mountains. We can change the world. We can be his representatives of peace, strength, and love within our family, our neighborhood, and our workplace. Jesus, the one with the power to rebuke the winds and calm the waters, is our lifesaver. The knowledge that he is within us boosts us up above the waters of fear and into the peace of his presence. My child, the person who esteems anything for itself alone, forgetting my goodness and love, is looking away from me. Whoever looks away from me, they fall into fear. Whatever does not help you to please me has no true value in your life. You should therefore consider it as nothing. Unless you see me in your daily life, you will sooner or later become discontented. Wherever you are and wherever you turn, if any man tries to enjoy anything, as though it were his alone, he will not have a lasting joy nor true freedom. In many ways, he will find himself tied down and shut off from me. The striving, the toiling of being famous, of having more, of making more money, of having more status, or having a bigger car, a bigger house. All of the striving creates more fear and more torment. How to obtain it, how to keep it, how not to lose it. It only separates you from me, my child. Be it ever so little, if anything is loved and valued more than it deserves, it holds you back from me, highest good. I am your highest good, and it weakens your soul. The man who looks only for worldly satisfaction becomes blind to the loving presence of his Creator. When we take our eyes away from Jesus, we fall into depression and to despair, we fall into the torment of doing things based on our own understanding, based on our own strength. And so since we are limited, we then want to make things happen by our own strength and that never works. And that just makes us frustrated it makes us impotent to the fact that we think that we may have more power than we really do have. My friend, think about this. 
One who seeks only pleasure, ease, honor, or profit is just a fleshly person seeking his own good and his own pleasure. That will always lead us to a path of fear. If he lives only for this life, or only for himself, or only to to the seeking of the pleasures of this life, without looking at other people, or helping other people, or being a philanthropist, or just assisting a church, or doing something for someone else. He becomes a slave of his earthly desires, and he doesn't even think about God. And I propose that from this day forward, you think about God more often in your day. Include him more, invite him more, speak with him more, and you'll see that you will live more in peace than in fear. It is outstanding the way that Christ, when we have a conversation with Christ, we're basically allowing Christ to be that ear, that therapist. He is our psychiatrist. He is our friend. He is our redeemer, our savior, our God. He's everything. And when we just let go of things. We let go of those thoughts that keep tormenting us or keep taking us into a place of fear. We can release the anxiety. We can release the fear onto the Lord. He is more than capable, more than powerful, sovereign to be able to take the load that we take off of ourselves and put on to him. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you and we bless you. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for the word of God. We thank you for the blood of Jesus. We thank you for your sacrifice. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for our families. We thank you for our friends. We thank you for all of the brothers and sisters in Christ in the church. We thank you for missionaries. We thank you, God, for every blessing seen and unseen, everything that you have done for us in the spiritual realm that we have no idea, Lord God. Father, we rely on your assistance to keep us free from slavery to earthly attractions. We rely on your assistance, my Father, to keep us from the slavery of the shiny object syndrome, my Father for us to be swayed, for us to be led to the shiny objects of life, my God. Those which cause, my Father, an upheaval in our lives, we lose our patience, we lose our peace, we lose everything that is worthwhile in our lives. When we turn our back, when we walk contrary to you, my Father, It is so easy to fall into fear. It is so easy to be disconnected from you, my God, and fall into all of those lowly emotions of despair and depression and anxiety and worry. Father, you have given us so many things to enjoy in this life. You have given us so many things within the confinements and within the context of everything pure, perfect, lovely, We have so much to enjoy. We have a great enjoyment in each other, in loving one another, in helping other people, in helping a church, in serving, uh, helping other people that are less fortunate than us. There is great value in doing that. Great value. And Lord, we just thank you, Father, that the daily enjoyments of this life They all pass away. But there are certain things, Lord God, that never pass away, like your word, like your presence in our life, like the the revelations that you give us each day when we spend time with you, Lord. 
and you alone are the best and the highest. You alone are the best that we can enjoy, the best that we can come every single day and speak with you. And those things, my Father, that we offload on you, my God, we know that you are more than sovereign and more than capable and more than powerful, Lord God. And we just thank you, Lord, that we have you in our lives. Where would we be if we didn't have you, God? Where would we be, Father God, in our life, especially with everything that's going on in the world today, everything that's going on, my Father? The wars, the murders, the deaths, my God, everything that's happening in our life, my God, in the world today, my Father, that if we don't remain steadfast in you, my Father, we can lose our peace and fall into fear and into dread. The dread of tomorrow, God, the dread of our finances, the dread of what's going to happen with our family, the dread of what's going to happen with our lives or with our retirement or whatever, my Father. But when we put our trust in you, God, when we look to you as the highest good, as the ultimate, as the ultimate answer, response, the ultimate word, the ultimate, Father God, counselor, that you can counsel us as through the power of the Holy Spirit of God. Father, rather than going to the world and seeking advice from the world, my Father, we come to you and we seek advice from you. And you are more than faithful to lead us and to guide us and to direct us down paths of righteousness, my Father, and ways everlasting. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you. In your precious Son, Jesus' name, we pray, O oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Amen and amen.